Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing you another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we're talking about how strong is the Flagellant. This is the new character uh, who was added in the Crimson Court DLC, uh, and he's one of the most unique character designs, I think, in the game. Um, as a whole, I really like the Crusader, just for the diversity element of it, independent of the strength of the character, just I like the character design. So. Um, all right, before we get onto that though, let's talk about uh, the disclaimer here, which is that I am basing most of the strategy advice I'm gonna be giving about this Crusader, uh, about this Crusader, excuse me, about this character on uh, on the highest difficulty level of play in Darkest Dungeon, which is no light uh, and hard mode. I'm doing this because any advice that would be useful there is gonna be useful uh, in other lower uh, difficulty dungeons. So we're gonna take it from that approach. Um, the Flagellant is a primary damage dealer and a secondary healer. Uh, that's, that's the roles the, the Flagellant does. Uh, let's take a look at the stats together. So if you look underneath the webcam, I have the Flagellant's uh, stats compared to the average hero stats in Darkest, uh, in Darkest Dungeon, the, the other heroes. The Flagellant's a little bit below average on HP, um, a little bit below average on dodge, uh, a little bit above average on speed, uh, actually quite a bit above average on speed, nine speed's pretty respectable. Um, a little bit below average on crits, way below average on average damage. Um, actually, I think the second lowest damage after the uh, Antiquarian. Um, high stun resist at 110. Average blight resist, highest bleed resist in the game at 125. Um, decent above average disease risk at 100, uh, above average move resist at 110, uh, average debuff resist at 90, and uh, the lowest uh, trap disarm in the game, and moves forward three and moves back one, uh, which is basically the best mobility you could ask for this character. Um, moving forward three means that no matter what position you're in, you're always gonna be able to move to a position where you can attack from, uh, and moving back one means if you wanna stall by uh, not attacking an opponent, instead move around, you can do that, although he has other stall options anyway, so he is uh, as he is as much as you can ask for in terms of mobility. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, primary abilities of the Flagellants. Um, the Flagellant uh, is a, as I said, a damage dealer, doing most of his damage via bleeds. Um, so punish is the, the, the number one ability you're gonna be using on the Flagellants. Position one, two, Flagellant wants to be in position uh, one, two, really. Uh, if it gets shuffled to position three, four, there are some abilities they can use, but they're pretty useless in three, four. They really wanna be in position one, two, 99% uh, of the time. Um, Punish is a fairly solid ability. It uh, puts a large bleed on uh, and puts a bleed debuff on the target. Uh, debuffs, you know you know my stance on debuffs, I don't really like them, but a, uh, it's not that important that that bleed debuff lands, and you're gonna be using uh, Punish almost every single round anyway, so you have a lot of chances to add it, and it just makes your primary damage dealing ability more consistent, which is great. Um, bleeds are really strong in the game right now. Um, all the new content is, res uh, is less resistant to bleeds and more resistant to blights, and dots have always been strong, so that basically shifted the focus from blights to bleeds a little bit. Uh, in addition, they buffed some bleed abilities. The Highwayman's uh, bleed ability got buffed, which means that uh, you might use that a little bit more. So having another character that helps with the bleeding stuff is quite good. Um, and finally, uh, they added a bunch of new bosses that have extra actions per round. And bleeds are particularly good, dots in general are particularly good versus enemies that have multiple actions because they take a tick of the damage of the dot every single time they act uh, ever, rather than once per round which means that a lot of times if before uh, versus enemies that only have like one action or sometimes two actions, if you have a lot of dots on them, a lot of the dot damage is wasted because they're never gonna get to that turn. You know, they go, they go, one, they go one turn per round and you have a 12 point dot, well that means they took 12 damage per round. If you have a 12 point dot on a character that takes three actions per round, it took 36 damage. Now granted your dots only for three turns, uh, et cetera, but that, that basically means that versus enemies that have multiple actions, the dots are gonna be more consistently doing high damage uh, or more consistently doing their full damage than they would versus enemies with less actions. That's pretty cool. Uh, so the Flagellant is, the meta is, <laughs> it's weird to say that about a game that's fairly static, but that's essentially what it is. The, the enemy's meta is such that dots are particularly good and bleeds are the best of the available dots for that. All right. Reign of Sorrows, I wanted to like this ability. It's an AOE dot that dots the back two ranks. 
Uh, and since the Flagellant can only hit the front three ranks, being able to do a little bit of damage to rank four would sometimes be the difference between killing a target and not killing a target. The problem is this is a minus 90% damage modifier, which means that uh, uh, you're rarely going to do the damage with upfront damage. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, guys. Um, instead, what's going to happen is you're, uh, you're going to do the damage with dot damage. And that means your ability has to hit. So that's a you know 90% hit cap. The enemy has to be bled, which is too unfortunate. And the bleed has to kill the enemy, which is a lot less likely than if uh, that it was bleed plus a, a really, uh, reasonable amount of damage from the enemy. Uh, that combined with the flagellant's really low base damage means that Reign of Sorrows re rarely is going to be the difference between finishing off an opponent and not finishing off an opponent. And since the flagellant's primary attack already reaches rank, uh, rank 3, that means that it's only it's not only is it rarely going to be the difference between killing them and not killing them it also uh only is ever going to be applicable to rank four i pretty much have taken this off my bar entirely is perhaps the weakest ability the flagellant has um exsanguinate's neat a lot of the flagellant abilities are actually quite neat um they trigger this one uh and this one are only will trigger when the flagellant is at 50 percent hp or lower it says below in the tooltip it lies to you if you're exactly 50 percent it will trigger as well and it basically means it sits on your bar a lot of time and you can't even use it but when you do get below at or below 50 percent you have access to exsanguinate and uh, redeem and i like both these abilities exsanguinate is a higher uh, bleed per turn than flagellate um, it has the same base damage, but a higher bleed per turn and a little bit lower crit chance. But it can only hit positions 1-2, which is a little bit obnoxious. But it's quite good still, especially versus bosses where you might actually be useful to hit position 1-2. A lot of bosses that will be okay with. Um, and it gives you a self-heal. And the self-heal is a large percentage-based self-heal, which is great. Uh, it does put a minus damage debuff on you, a minus dodge debuff on you, and a minus speed debuff on you. But minus speed is less bad versus bosses than it is versus trash mod. Minus dodge, I don't care about. And minus damage is a lot less bad on a bleed-based character than a non-bleed-based character. Basically, the flagellant already has such low base damage, and the bleed portion of the damage is not affected by the minus damage portion of it, that that debuff is not really meaningful on the flagellant, uh, whereas the heal is really good. And what this lets you do is... Um, Sometimes just put in, and we already talked about how good bleeds are versus bosses that have multiple actions. This means that sometimes a boss hits you really hard, you hit him back with an incredible bleed really hard that heals the damage he dealt to you, and that's just an awesome ability. Um, Redeem is similar um, in that it's uh, also a very nice anti-boss ability. This is the primary time I use it is versus bosses or sometimes versus uh, very high-level trash mobs, uh, particularly Crimson Court trash mods, mobs that are doing AoE damage to you. Um, and this is a heal that is a big single target heal. It heals yourself and a target of your choosing, uh, also for a very large portion of health. And this is just awesome versus AoEs. Uh, when your enemies are doing a ton of damage to you, like they just got like a critical impale, I'm thinking Swinatar right now, or uh, Swine, uh, what is it? Swine Skeever, Skyver, I can never remember how it said, the new, uh, the new Warrens mob that hits a bunch of targets sometimes, or any of the bosses that do AoEs, I'm thinking Swine King when he hits two guys at once or something. This is an awesome way to uh, to recover the health on both those targets only using a single action. It's extremely good for action economy. And again, the buffs really aren't that bad versus bosses in particular. Um, that said, it can be a little bit inconsistent. For example, if you're being AoE'd by a target that, by an enemy that attacks multiple targets but doesn't attack all of your targets, you might be in a position where the flagellant wasn't targeted, but two other targets were, and you were kind of counting on the flagellant to help heal that damage, in which case it won't always trigger, and that's a bit of a downside. Uh, but I, overall, I like this and I keep this on my bar. It's really powerful for the oh shit moments. And I actually get some flack about this on my channel. Uh, people, people are suggesting I don't use the flagellant as he's intended. They think I should keep him at lower health, keep dots on him, keep damage on him so he can always use these abilities. I don't think that at all. I think his primary ability is really good. And I think these abilities right here are both extremely good oh shit abilities. When stuff goes wrong, and Darkest Dungeon is a game designed to have stuff go wrong, then that is the time you want to use these abilities. These are these become accessible when stuff went wrong, and they're extremely powerful, game-changing abilities that can keep your keep your team uh, keep your team alive, or keep that extra little bit of damage on the boss that you need to kill it faster, or whatever it happens to be. And that's also my start my my thought with the final item that I like on my bar as a flagellant, and that's suffer. I really like suffer. I like suffer for two reasons. The first is that it lets you stall, and that is. Uh, 
if you're in a position two and you don't want to if you, you don't want to attack any of the remaining enemies on the board you don't have to move him you can just you suffer and buff up your protection and death blow resist while uh while staying in position and the second is this is again super super good for oh shit moments how do characters die in darkest dungeon what is the most common way characters die the most common way characters die is they get crit a couple of times and on one of those crits that applies a dot so basically they get brought down to zero health suddenly unexpectedly and a dot is on them and then their turn happens and the dot ticks and it kills them that's the most common way for me to lose characters in the higher levels of play and suffer is one more shot at preventing that because there's a chance that another character will have an action and will be able to remove that dot before that character has to take that death door test so suffer for me is awesome for that ability um his other abilities are uh endure I hate Endure. Um, it's good at level one, but when you level it, it gets worse, <laughs> which is kind of stupid. Um, but it is a, it's a way of moving around stress. Supposedly, you're losing a little bit of stress while you're doing that, but the amount you're losing isn't really worth the actions it takes to do it. And really, all it is doing is juggling stress from a high stress target to a lower stress target so you can heal it some other way. I tried to make this work, and it just really didn't work. It didn't even work with uh, combining it with the Hound. The Hound has an AoE stress heal, which hypothetically means if you can remove the, uh, the peaks out of your... You know, if you have three characters at, like, 10 stress and one guy at 50, you should be able to use in plus the hounds heal to move it around and make the, the total number of rounds you need to reduce it less and it really wasn't consistent enough to make it worthwhile for me and then finally there's reclaim uh, reclaim is I, I actually don't think this is worth using this applies a dot to the flagellant while applying a heal over time to a target of your choice and it doesn't have an HP restriction which means you can cast this when you're at full health for example the problem is a the heal over time is super tiny. It's only a, it's a, it scales up very, very slowly. Um, and, and to be fair, the heal over time does apply before the dot applies for, for that, that person. So if, uh, if the opponents, if your, if your guy is at zero health and, uh, he has a two point dot on him and you reclaim him, he's, he will heal those two points before taking the two points of the dot, which will potentially save him from a death door check. But the problem is this doesn't scale up fast enough in the terms of the, the health per round that it does. So that rarely is the case that rarely is there a case where this this heal over time is for a larger amount than the dot over time, the, the damage over time effect that the guy is afflicted with. Which means that rarely is reclaim gonna save a life when it wouldn't otherwise. And I don't think it has enough utility the rest of the time, because the heal is too small. I don't think it's worth casting most of the time. And the the bleed that applies to the flagellant is kind of a big bleed. It's it's a it's a normal size bleed for the level equivalent where the heal is smaller than the level equivalent. That said, the flagellant has fairly good bleed resist. Um, I believe this is like the occultist heal and the fact that you can resist it. I just can't give it a place on my bar. If I had five slots, this would be the fifth one I would use on him. But I only have four slots that I can have for active skills, and I already use punish, exsanguinate, redeem, and suffer. And I think all four of those are just a better choice than reclaim. All right, let's talk about some of the other things that Flagellant does. He's pretty neat. He's got some other unique abilities too. Uh, let's talk about his camping skills. This is kind of weird because every other class has four unique camping skills and the generic three. The Flagellant, for whatever reason, is not allowed to use the generic three. I don't know why. Um, however, his the, the of the four he has, two of them are really good. Um, Lash's Cure is great. This is a, another way to save yourself money in the same way that a Plague Doctor or a um, Grave Robber will allow you to cure diseases on yourself. You can also cure diseases on yourself with the flagellant. So that's nice. It only costs one, so it's dirt cheap to do it. So if you get diseased in the flagellant, it's very easy to remove that. Um, Lash's Kiss is all right. Um, it is a speed buff, which is great. Uh, and speed buffs on, uh, on damage dealers or stunners are really good. And the flagellant is very much a damage dealer, so that's quite nice. Um, and it is also a heal and remove blight bleeding. So it's, it's okay. I'm not against this. Uh, and it's cheap. It's only two for a plus three speed buff. That's pretty decent. Um, I don't mind that one. And then uh, Lash's Solace is amazing. It's also only two point cost to use it, and it's minus 50 stress, uh, which is a huge amount of stress. That's half your stress bar, which is great. So these three are all pretty decent, although I would consider this one and um, this one the best, and these two both just pretty good. This one seems terrible to me. Um, it only costs one, so you could do it cheaply. The goal is for this. So... Unlike every other class, when the flagellant reaches 100 stress, he doesn't do an affliction check. He just becomes, uh, he just gains a specific affliction that's unique to him. And the affliction he gains is less bad than the other afflictions. Um, and it gives him some buffs 
So it's less bad in the fact that it, it's not giving out as much stress to the rest of the team. It doesn't take your actions away in the same way, but it does still remove control of your hero to some degree for me. So the arg it, it's the flagellant does a couple of things, right? So he has that, that, that's the first one. That's the one related to being stressed out. So when you hit hundred stress, you get the special uh, buff. I can't remember the name of it right now for the flagellant that only the flagellant gets, you get that in lieu of another affliction and it's a less bad affliction as afflictions go. Also, if the flagellant reaches a certain low point of HP, he gets a uh, damage bonus. Um, I, there's another portion of that bonus. I forgot what it is right now, but uh, he basically gets a, he, he gets nastier when he's at lower levels of HP. But that, that to me is the same problem with things like deliberately hurting yourself to use redeem or exsanguinate is that it's taking risks with characters that you don't need to be taking. Flagellant doesn't have particularly high HP. He doesn't need to be afflicted to be good. He's already good without being afflicted. He doesn't need to be at low HP to be good. He's already good without being at low HP. And there's lots of things in the game that are can go wrong if you're at high stress or high high uh, or very low HP, right? That's how you lose characters. You have high stress and then you have a character who doesn't respond when you tell him to do it. He does his own thing because he has his affliction, which happens to the flagellant. Suddenly he's killing targets you don't want killed or he's not attacking targets you do want killed or he's moving or passing or this type of shit that's really, really bad for you. And if you're at low HP, you run the risk of suddenly an opponent does something that you weren't expecting or wasn't planned for, or he got a very high speed roll and shouldn't have been able to happen, but did, or he crits you. And suddenly you're turning a scenario where you're doing perfectly fine with the abilities you have and putting it into a scenario where you're going to lose characters. And also damage mod on a character who has low base damage and uses mostly bleed damage you don't need a damage mod anyways. It's not effective for the character's actual performance. So I, again, I see these as nice little quirks the, the uh, flagellant has when shit goes wrong. When he gets a ton of stress all of a sudden, he's got kind of like a built-in protection to it where he gets less of a negative affliction than the other classes do. When shit goes wrong on health and he takes a ton of damage when you weren't expecting it, he, uh, he gets stronger when he's down in the lower health and he has all sorts of protective options that open up. That's how I play my flagellants. And I really like them in that role. They're very, very strong right now in my opinion. So, all right, a um, couple other special restrictions. The flagellant is a religious character. I forgot to mention this when I did the Crusader video. Oops, uh, he is one of four. Um, it is the Vestal, the Crusader, the... Uh, Leper and the uh, Flagellant are the four, uh, four religious characters in the game right now, which means he will not uh, combo with the Abomination. And it also means that some uh, camping skills will give him a buff that uh, is in addition to what it would give non-religious characters. Um, mostly it doesn't matter. Uh, it just basically means he can't run with the Abomination, which sucks. Uh, also, Flagellants will only, uh, they will only stress relieve in town by flagellating. They won't do any of the other stress relieving activities, which isn't too, too bad as a whole. It is the most expensive one, but it also cures the most amount of stress. They don't tend to use stress relief activities very much in town, so it's not that big of a deal, uh, but it is a restriction to be aware of. Uh, and there's one more restriction. It's just totally slipped my mind on it. What the hell is it? This is where it'd be nice if I edited the videos as opposed to doing them in one setting, so I could pause and think about it and come back. Um, oh, right, you can't have two flagellates in the same group. For, for, unlike any other class in the game, they won't have multiple of the class in the party at once. I think because the dev team is worried about abusing things like redeem uh, with multiple classes for it, but uh, it is kind of an annoying little restriction uh, to have on it because sometimes you want to build a two flagellant party, for example. Um, overall, uh, my my rating for them is it's an extremely strong class on the uh, especially with the Crimson Court DLC. I would give it a strong for sure, um, and it's a very fun class. I I really like this. I think there's a lot of unique character design in here that they hadn't done in their other character designs for Darkest Dungeon. So I thought it was a really cool expansion uh, expansion class. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully it was useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll uh, see you soon.